Welcome to Point to Rise, your podcast that gives you permission to dream big, take messy action, and turn your talent into profit while turning your back on perfection. My name is Suzanne Purcell, high performance and mindset coach, former international ballerina, profitable entrepreneur, and founder of Point to Rise, a movement designed to empower dancers. It is my mission to use my own story as an inspiration for today's generation of dancers. And now sit back, stretch, warm up, or zip your coffee and love learning how much it matters to point at yourself first to rise to all that you are capable of. How are you? Oh my gosh, you look amazing. Look at you. <laughs> Hi, you did. You didn't change at all. Um, no, it's not true. Your hair is longer, far longer than it was. Yeah, much longer. It finally grew. <laughs> yeah, and it looks healthy. Ah, yeah. I still remember the perm. Yeah, you do. <laughs> the struggle to be pretty, you know? Yeah, yeah. I know. I let that I know. go. I know. But you look fab. Thanks, Annie. We're what, 40? You're 40, 45. We're 45. We're great. You look yeah. good too. Look at you. Love the hair. Suits yeah. You. It's leaving now, but I try to keep it somehow. <laughs> Yesterday, someone said, you know, I didn't recognize you because of your haircut and said, it's not a haircut. It's just trying to keep it. <laughs> so. Aww. I do remember our, our, our last, very last call, and it's, I was still dancing in Leipzig, and you left Berlin. Um, and you were disappointed because I seemed to be not interested in what you want to tell me, and, and I was disappointed because I was in such a rush, so I couldn't really pay attention to what you actually wanted to tell me. And so it was a bit... Remember that? I do. Oh, honey, it's all good. I'm like an elephant. No, it's all good, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I do not remember what I said yesterday, but I do remember things like that. Wow. Okay, I'm going to start recording. Like, yes. I'm new at this too, so we're just going to do this together. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit why and where this is coming from, and mm -hmm. we'll just unearth together. Okay, thank you so much for doing this, okay. With I pleasure, it's very exciting. It's yeah. really exciting. Yeah, well, you know, well, well, why don't I just start? Well, thank you so much, Stefan, for coming on the show today. I really appreciate you taking the time, especially after yesterday's premiere. How did it go, by the way? Did it go well? Uh, well, first of all, thanks for calling me and giving me the chance. And I'm really, really happy and excited to be here. Um, yes, the premiere went very, very well, actually, um, and the dancers were awesome, and uh, the public totally freaked out, and something happened what never happened before in this theater. The people went up just to stand, so standing ovation for the, for the dancers. It was really, really cool, and I really, really liked it. So, yeah, it was really a oh. special evening for everyone. Oh, that just gave me goosebumps. That's so beautiful. Isn't that what we uh, always wanted? Exactly. You know? Isn't that just really it? To the yes, park? absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. The response immediately, you know, and in real time. And it's not like um, a friend of mine once said, you know, she was a dancer as well. And now she is a physiotherapist. And she said, you know, I'm not getting applause for a good massage. And that's something I really miss, even though I don't miss staying on stage, but this one-to-one -one response to what I'm doing, mm -hmm. positive or negative, but usually negative you will get <laughs> anyway. Yeah, regardless uh, where you are at. <laughs> exactly, exactly, and exactly. And it doesn't matter how good you are, but this positive response deep from the heart so that the people are really just jumping up and clapping crazingly in in their hands it's it's really you're not getting for a massage obviously unfortunately no can we can we look back to this because there is 
so much good stuff already in there. Um, I would like you to tell me, tell me a little bit where are you at right now, what you're doing, what your job description is, and um, how you got there. Like, just go for the, it. Hold the whole way through. Um, the whole way, love. <laughs> I'm. Uh, now, at the moment, I'm uh, the ballet director and the choreographer of Ballet Koblenz, which is uh, a ballet company in a typical German theater. So that means beside ballet, we also have drama, opera, and uh, puppets, actually. So puppet theater. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. So, uh, and that's something I really like in this German theater. Uh, system because um, I'm not just responsible for the for the ballets or the dance productions also right now I'm actually working on Chicago the musical and before I did uh, choreography for Don Giovanni for the opera because there are dancers in it and I didn't work with dancers I worked with the with singers, actually, and this is totally different. And yeah, <laughs> it is. And um, and sometimes I'm also surprised how much uh, fun it can be to work with. Uh, maybe that's not <laughs> the right word for it, but how interesting and how um, overwhelming it can be to work with uh, non dancers. So, uh, because the approach, of course, is totally different. They want to know m more about uh, what is it about. And uh, so, you're not starting with giving steps or um, just to say, let's try that out. You have to be prepared, you have to know exactly why they have to do what they have to do so and with dancers it's easier but maybe it's because it's the my profession and um uh, i started actually somewhere in the middle i guess with 10 in 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 the school in berlin most of my dancers now they start much earlier so when they are seven or five ish oh. and uh, that's very young but i mean of course then it's more like child dance moving rhythm not so much ballet uh hopefully and <laughs> um to get to get into and um and then they stick with it like like i did like we did basically and then we went through that school together for eight years you and me yes we did yes we did <laughs> um and um when I meet Martin Putke today, uh, which was our director during that time, um, it is very strange. It, it was a very long road for me to accept what happened and uh, forgive him the way he treated us, but first of all, also to forgive myself to allow him to treat me like he did. So. Um, and now I see he is an old man and he is just looking for attention and love. So, but it was a very long road, I have to say. So, and, and after, after I left, uh, Berlin, I went to Leipzig and danced there for 10 years with the, with the company, with Uwe Scholz. And, um, um, How was that? How was it with Uber? It is a bit. It's a bit tricky. Funny enough, yesterday on the on the on the party of the after the premiere, um, I met someone who danced, who was a dancer in Munich, uh, and she worked with Uber for one production. Uh, he did a ballet there, uh, Jeune Homme from um, Mozart Piano Concerto or something. Um, and she asked me exactly the same. And uh, first I thought maybe I should be polite and talk about the genius of Uwe Scholz. And uh, choreographically, yes, he was a genius. Um, it Sometimes, you know, it is, um, 
in the end, it is a very sad story. So because his story is very sad and he was very sensitive, very sensitive. And I really, really loved working with him um, most of the time. And um, it is difficult if you work with someone who struggles with himself so much with his doubts and fears and, and the pressure to be a, a wunderkind um, that you you can see you can see that but you can't help i mean you can't help anyway because you are not the person that person and uh plus he was my boss and i was his dan one of his dancers um but to see how it goes downhill that's really that's with him as as human being that's 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 really tough and um but I always loved dancing his, his stuff because it was perfect for the way my body moved. And uh, I always loved that he used that music not just as a sound carpet, but really to allow the dancers and the audience to, to hear that music differently. Because usually if you have a choreographer who works who works with the music and that ha doesn't happen very often actually um, is you, yes. you hear yes no <laughs> uh, totally uh, you have a three four and he tells you something like you should count it in eights and then you're just what wait a second it's a three four how can you count it in eights and Uwe was so strict and so clear and so usually you hear the, the bass line and then the melody Right. So, and you know, there's something around, yeah. but with Uwe, he was capable through this choreography to let you hear all the instruments in between, like, like uh, the viola or, you know, the, these voices, they're really just, just uh, there to, to find a good transition between the bass and the melody or just to to cover some other ideas behind your not getting but you feel them somehow i can't explain it better no this is great uh, but you but you could see it so and i know exactly uh, what you mean you you actually are able to hear it once you see it in the dance exactly oh my gosh, I didn't even know that note was there, but through that movement, it came out. And I, exactly. that is a special gift people have when they query. Totally. Yeah. yeah. And this was, that was really, that's what I really loved. I mean, if you work with a choreographer for a long time, then uh, you hear the music and you know exactly what's going to, going to happen uh, stepwise for as, as a dancer. And it, this was totally fine because he had such a, amazing taste of of uh, music and good taste of music and was also always interested in i think also losing himself in different um kind of music so we did like we did bach on one hand and we did stravinsky and we did uh bartok and kurtak and so very very contemporary stuff and very very let's call it safe classic, but it's not true because um, beside his swan leg and his sleeping beauty, all the classic music he used, you really got another idea out of it. So it's like you um, explore it differently and new. And it was also for me dancing wise, I could lose myself while dancing. I never, I never thought of, technical issues or problems or how to lift the girl. Uh, it was always like the music drove me to it naturally somehow. Yeah. So, and I really loved that bis till the point uh, I had to leave. Yeah. So after you left Leipzig, what was after that? Well, then I tried to be a freelance dancer. Awesome. <laughs> and, Good for you. Yeah, and choreographer, and I, but I found out I need the structure of the theater. Yeah. Because uh, I don't know how it, how it is for you, but from the age of 10, I was scheduled 
from someone else. Mm -hmm. So, and yes, it can feel like a cage, but it also protects you. No, you know, at 10 o'clock, there's a class and then you work till two and then you have your free time till six. And then from six to 10, you work again. Doesn't matter rehearsals or performance. And then on the next day, it's exactly the same. And then you have one day off and blah, 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 like that. So, um, and then all of a sudden, you have to organize yourself and you, you don't know, you have to go to different offices to get special informations about how to get money for living or for the art you would like to do. And this was actually quite tough. And uh, I really could feel I was for six months, I guess, even though I had jobs, so it wasn't the problem, but it felt like a bit like Alice, you know, falling into a hall. So and not really knowing how to get out there. It it happened accidentally somehow, I guess. Can I can I ask you why you left? Mm -hmm. like, what was that in you that provoked you to leaving? Because after 10 years you were in your prime. Like you were what, 28, 29? 28. Yeah. Yeah. 28. Um what was it that made you step out of that safety net? Because I, I hear what you're saying. I, know, I went exactly through the same thing. I'm going through it actually again in a, a different setting, but I, I know the comfort of a tight schedule and I, I thrive in certain ways until it like strangles me because I don't mm -hmm. feel like I have the freedom. But either way, like, either um, extreme of either freedom or scheduling doesn't work for me either. Like finding that, but how did you, how did you get to that point where you said, I can't do this anymore? Like what was your driver? I think, um, and this somehow goes back to, to, to the school again. Um, Till a very long time, as for me, a very long time, I think we always were taught in school we are not good enough, we are not deserving what we get. Oh, honey, I think that. Would I'm you still, agree? I still struggle with that to this day. Like, till today, I You're am not, not good enough. It's, it's down here so deep in my subconscious that I, yeah, it's just a fight every day to not feel that way. You're not alone. Thank You're you. not alone. <laughs> so, uh, but on the other hand, it also gave me the idea what I get in Leipzig is not good enough. It could be more and it could be, I don't, I can't explain it better. I, it was a bit like, um, because, I mean, I had actually not such a hard time in school like most of my classmates had because my body was able to do it easily. So yeah, you had you had it all, right? Like if I had it all. Yes. 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 No, but it, I mean it is like that. It's not it's I didn't do anything for it. The body was made like that. Right. So um so I always hear her I still can hear there was one rehearsal of Grand Pas. And I was the second cast for, for the two principals. And um, so the first cast did something and then uh, Putka was there. And then I don't know why he said, I also would like to see the second cast. I mean, I know why, but um, I, I guess why. Um, just to keep us busy and scared. Um, and then he said, I also would like to see the second cast. So we did the second cast and I think I did quite good actually so and then he said you know Stefan this wasn't even 30 percent of your talent uh and of course he didn't say it the way I say it now it was loud loud in your face <laughs> yeah so um so I always thought okay uh from that point on I'm so talented so I deserve more and um and in in Leipzig I always had the feeling I was good enough to dance all the principal parts when 
or if no one else was there. So when the first part, when the first cast left the company, I would jump in and dance this. Mm -hmm. Oh, and in the end, I danced all the all the parts I actually want to dance, but never as first cast. So and somehow. Uh, I was very angry. It was stupid. Uh, I mean, he went downhill and of course he, he was so over, he was so busy with himself that of course he wasn't able to listen to someone else and his issues and problems and uh, ego. Um, so there was a point I asked for, for a talk and he said he doesn't have time for me. Mm. Um, and I said, okay then that's it yeah. so um it was very selfish from my side it was also quite selfish from his side i guess um and i also guess he was actually quite disappointed that i left uh because suddenly i didn't dance anything anymore so from the day of um i gave my um no uh, in, the, in, in in January, mm -hmm. and from then on, I only danced. I think I only was only in two uh, productions in the very last, 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 last line. So, um, and all the others who also quitted in this season, they still got their parts they had before. So, um, but I wrote him a letter. Uh, a year later, I was apologizing for everything. And because it was clear for me, uh, it yes, of course, he was the, the reason why I was angry. But in the end, it wasn't really related to him. It was really just something I had to deal with myself. And I couldn't do it during that time. And, uh, and I didn't understand that. So but I never regretted to leave the company. Everything happens for a reason, right? Absolutely. Um, so this is so good. I think you're the first one where I, I hear these words, ego and forgiving and sort of reason why, why I wanted to start this and, and having like the honest conversation is because when I started figuring myself out and I, I was, still am a great person that can just swallow things and not think about it and just push it down and just not feel and not say anything and just deal with whatever comes up or make myself not feel anything. Like I'm great at that. But when you have kids, that doesn't work for a long time. Mm. You know, sooner or later, um, you you find that you stepping into this leadership role, even mm. if it's for kids, like you see yourself in how they react or act or say or speak or, and that for me was an awakening where it's like, hmm, I don't know, that's me. I can, I have the mirror right there. This is not who I am. I don't want to be like my mother at all. I don't want to be like my teachers. I am different. And this, whatever has been given to me is going to stop right here. And I mm -hmm. have the power to make my own choices and to be whoever I want to be. Um, and that's when I started digging up all the things that were given to us in the ballet school, you know, like the heavy bullying when I was 15, that came all back. Like the feeling too fat. Like to this day, I look at myself, it's like, holy, am I, am I thin enough? It's like, there's some fat there. And that's just so silly. I am 45 years old. I should be over this. Yeah. Um, and I was like, well, but if I am feeling that way, I'm sure I'm not the only one. And I look at the generation that's coming into the theaters now, and especially here in North America, how much they are already in this stress and mm. disbelief of themselves and how much ego is popping out there just to keep them safe and how ballet companies treat their dancers at times. Mm. You know, I was privy to, to that because I danced in, in America and honey, that, that was 
it made me quit mm. at 29. It made me say, I do not want this anymore. I trained for this my entire life. If this is what I'm going to surround myself for the next 10 years, no, I'm going to die. Like my soul is going to die here. Um, so it took me till about two years now to actually find the courage to open up the conversation and to say, hey, why don't I just step up and help these people with what I have learned so far in my journey on becoming a better person or a better version of myself? Mm -hmm. um, because I don't, I don't feel that we were ever given those tools. You know, if I look at athletes, it's like the tools that they have available, it's phenomenal. Yeah. And then I look at the dance industry, the dance community, and all it is, it's just body and body image. And this is how you get your muscles stronger. And this is what you do to get better feet or higher extension or whatever it is. But we're not talking about our mind and how powerful our mind actually is more powerful than any other muscle in our body absolutely um so talking about this you you're leading now a company you're working with dancers and you had to overcome you had to forgive you, you what initiated that because i don't hear it very often I see dancers after they stop dancing or after they step out of the theater, I see them fall into a hole because they don't have that recognition that's standing mm -hmm. away from or even the lights shine on them. Like, what was it that made you dig deeper? Do you remember? Mm, I mean, the, the point why I'm still in the theater is, <laughs> I guess that's the only thing I can do. Um, or want to do I want to do basically okay. I tried something else that didn't work out um, so um, and I got this job as it often is just pure luck I, I uh, studied choreography at the Paluka Schule oh really? So I'm one of the very few who went through Berlin and Paluka Schule mm -hmm. um, and this was actually um, I did a choreography there and I was lucky enough that the director of the school was interested in the way I choreographed. So he gave me a lot of opportunities. And uh, one was um, to choreograph a piece for a, a project called, um, how did it call? <laughs> Tanzplan. Mm -hmm. um, and that was a lot of money and uh, certain, all cities could apply for that money from the government. and. Uh, and you got a million euros over the time, uh, over the period of five years, if the city was also willing to spend exactly the same amount of money. And Dresden got that money. And I was lucky enough to get a, uh, a place in one of the projects they did with the money. And wow. in this project, one of the teachers from the school danced so one in this choreography I, I made, uh, she danced the, the part of the time. And she was actually a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend of the intendant from uh, Theater Koblenz, who was looking for a neoclassic choreographer who's also interested in working in a Drei Sparten Theater. So, um, and, um, and she asked me if I would be interested and I said, Laura, honestly, I have nothing to lose. Of course I'm interested. Um, and so this is how I got the job. Um, and we had a very nice interview and I thought uh, I applied. This was one of the very few German theaters I didn't apply for any position, <laughs> I have to say before. So because I never heard of Theater Koblenz before. And um, I knew it, it existed, but so not a huge reputation and um and then we had an interview and he said you know you're at the moment you're my favorite but i have two others and i told him no don't tell me something like that <laughs> call me to say yes or no 
So, and then he called me and said, yes. And I said, uh, and asked me, are you still interested? And I said, well, of course. So, and this is how I got the job. And um, he didn't, I mean, he probably had a feeling. He has a very good sense, uh, I have to say, uh, not talking about me. I mean, in general, when he hires people. Mm -hmm. um, but he hired me because he liked me. And he saw one of my choreographies on YouTube, which was uh, a solo called uh, Aprishi in Kitzbühel, which is basically not what I'm doing now. <laughs> has nothing to do with neoclassic at all. Uh, it's just Steffen making fun of different types of disco dancers so or club dancers um how they call it today <laughs> uh, yeah if you say disco then the people are looking at you oh man you are old oh you're so old yeah not oh, gosh. Disco. <laughs> i'm still not used to this <laughs> you are so 20th century um <laughs> so um so he hired me because he saw something in me. He didn't know if I was able to, to lead a company or if I would be able to uh, produce at least two big ballet productions per year uh, or per season. And um, in the beginning, I, I always wanted to be a director. I always said, I want, one day I would love to have my own company. I remember uh, that. And it was clear. and. Uh, and I got it. So, but of course, in the beginning, I had no experience whatsoever. So I always, if, if there was a moment, I didn't know how to react and how to do it. I always thought, what would Uwe do? And I did always the opposite. And it always worked. So, yeah. um, but I, this, actually, this position as director to, to, so to sit on the other side helped me a lot to understand how I behave and to, to start to understand um, how selfish we are as dancers. And, Thank you and so much course, for saying that, because it's the truth. It's the truth. And I mean, I also can't understand that's the way it is because the career is so short if you want to have one. And um, you are always looking into the mirror and you see yourself. Not, I mean, it is not like, oh, I'm beautiful, I'm great. I mean, we know there are colleagues who are exactly like that, no? To That's look into the mirror to That's feed the ego even yeah. more. But most of us are looking into the mirror to say, no, that's wrong. No, that's not right. You could turn out more. You could turn more. You could jump higher. The leg is not high enough. You know, it's always competition with yourself. So you are busy with yourself. You can't see the whole picture. I mean, not uh, me as I director. Can't. Even me, I can't. No, nobody can. No, but I have a, let's say I have a bigger view. I can imagine, I can see things and I can understand things. And I try to explain things to dancers if they don't understand why they don't get the lead or why I'm not really happy with the situation right now we have to deal with. And so I always try to talk to the dancers that they understand what's going on. And since this season, for example, we do every week uh, a 10 minutes meeting just to, I tell them if there's something I don't like at the moment, then I tell them. So, and if they have something, I really encourage them, which is quite hard because we also didn't learn it in school to say what we want and what we need and what we are suffering. And, you know, well, um, well, there was no such culture. We just had to work. Exactly. Function. From the first day on. Yeah. And if you don't function, you, you can go back to your old life. Yeah. 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 And, uh, and I always say, you know, maybe we can't find a solution now in this 10 minutes talk, but at least we know there is an issue we should think about or we should take care of. So. Uh, Can I just applaud you for this? Yeah. Thank you so much for doing that, because this is the first time I actually hear from a director that they're taking the time every week to connect connect like in any other company that is successful the success comes from the people that are working the company 
And it is no different in Bali. No. Because you're getting the money to run the company from the outside. You don't necessarily have to earn it yet. Yeah. Um, you still should treat the people that are making it possible exactly the same like everybody else. So how, how did you come up with that? Uh, I have to say it was my idea. I just, I just, uh, one of my colleagues here in, in Germany, an, another director, he, uh, he told me actually uh, that he, he starts to change the way they work together. And this is a contemporary company, but I thought, you know, a dance company is a dance company. Exactly. And yes, contemporary dancers are different than ballet dancers, but they're still human beings. So, uh, and I thought, give it a try. And um, now it seems they are not, they're still holding back sometimes, but they don't feel uncomfortable anymore to talk to me because I, uh, I consider myself as a very understanding director. So I try when they come to me into my office and they have a problem, I try to fix it for them if it's possible for me. If not, then I tell them. So, um, what, what I really missed in Leipzig, and uh, I mean, the company was much bigger. We are 16, here in Leipzig, we are 16 dancers. In, in, in uh, Leipzig, when I started, we were 62. And I think when we left, we were 52, something like that. I mean, much bigger. And, uh, but still, um, some of Uwe's favorite dancers didn't have a talk for years with him. So, and... That seems to be absurd, you know, to me. I mean, as a dancer, we are not just material. We're not just so the body, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know how long it took me to actually realize that I'm not just the body, but actually a woman? Like, mm -hmm. really accepting myself as a woman. You know, where we, when we were going through purity, that was just, no, you're growing parts that there shouldn't be anything like what was his name? Müller. Um, Harry. Harry Müller telling me, and I mean this with love, Harry, you just didn't know any better. I'm not, but it left such a big scarf on my heart. Flex your breast muscles when you bouvet because they jiggle. Um, and that just stayed with me. She didn't. Oh, yeah, that even like nursing, it's like, oh, my gosh, I have breasts. That is not good. You know, so that's how deep it goes in if you don't work yeah. on these. And I, and I find that as as teachers and, and stepping from like a dancer into a teacher, into a leadership role, that there there needs to be some sort of training. Like you, you're not naturally a leader. You're just passing on basically what yeah. you've been taught. And that way nothing changes. We're in the 21st century. Um, the way we're operating, the way we are, like how we're behaving like with each other or in the world needs to change. And I think one of the reasons that dancers are able to produce results as in terms of standing ovations is because they feel hurt. They feel loved. They feel respected. They feel safe. Because when you feel safe, you're able to let more of your soul out instead of the drama that you're worried about. Oh, gosh, I'm going to get yelled at tomorrow because I didn't do the right thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so thank you for changing that and being that person that is changing that because that's really all I'm looking for is to start that conversation and, and looking at what's out there and how we can make things different, even though, yeah, we've done it for, for the past, gosh, 50 years this way, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's the right way. Like, that's yeah. you. But, but you know, uh, funny enough, uh, talking about Harry Müller, just shortly, um, two of my dancers uh, were... Uh, pupil of him as well mm -hmm. so uh, and so we have three generations of people destroyed by Hari 
because especially for my absolute favorite dancer, uh, Kaho. Uh, Kaho, no? no, sorry. Kaho, Kaho Kishinami. She is a Japanese dancer. Um, he is still, now he retired two years ago, but he was still killing people. So um, it's horrible. And in interesting enough, we also sometimes we have conversations about Hari. Sometimes you make it as a joke, you know, like uh, be glad Harry didn't see it or things like that, you know, or Harry wouldn't like it. And then we all three start to laugh and the rest is just, oh, yeah, okay, insider again, boring. Um, but sometimes we also have very serious, especially with Kaho, I have very serious conversation because he treated her really like shit, uh, telling her she's too ugly and her legs are not, um, are too, uh, uh, how do you say it? Um, not straight enough and not, she's not long and legs are too short, things like that. And she is the, one of the most beautiful dancers and creatures and human beings I know. So, um, and sometimes we, we, we still talk about it and then she opens up and uh, it hurts her. It still does. Yeah, so, I can understand that. Yeah. So, and that's... And that's that Sorry to interrupt you, but no, no. I, I, I don't, I want to make really clear that we can't blame him for that either because he was hurting too. And he's probably still hurting like anybody that is hurting other people. They just hurt people because they're hurting inside, right? And they just don't have the tools to heal themselves. And they sometimes don't even know that they're doing that. Like the same when Martin was yelling in the studio, like, I just remember rehearsals on Saturday afternoons where he came in and just mm. yelled just to yell, you know, kids, children, yeah. teenagers. Um, and that, that is just not right. But he thought that's the way to teach. And, and you know what I experienced when I got into the theater it's like, I didn't know how to operate without that fear hmm. down my neck. Like I couldn't, my motivation was inflicted by fear. Like if hmm. I don't do this, Anita is going to yell at me. If I don't do this, Martin is going to throw me out. If I don't lose weight, I'm not able to dance. Like I put on 20 pounds. I finally was free. I could breathe again. But then I came into the theater and I shut everybody out. Like Brigitte mm -hmm. home, do you remember her? Like I she do. really tried to pull me and pull me and pull me. And I just, I gave maybe 70% every time, maybe. Mm -hmm. And because I didn't think I was worthy. I didn't think I was capable of doing this. And that was my... That it, it just escalated every every year. It got worse and worse and worse. Mm, of course. Yeah. Of course. But do you, you remember Felicitas, no? Oh yeah. Yes, yeah. you. Yeah. We are we are still friends. Oh, are uh, you? Gosh. Yeah. I, where is she now? She is teaching in at the Paluca now. Oh, is she? Oh, great. Yeah. So she followed her her father basically. Mm -hmm. uh, you and have not to. Well, yeah. yeah, and uh, so we we are calling each other from time to time and uh, talking. And unfortunately, still Anita Eden is <laughs> still coming up theme. <laughs> um, now a bit more relaxed, uh, but sometimes not. So it is. It's also it's very interesting. She is a very good teacher. I saw a few of her classes. She's a very caring, very good teacher, very clear in what she wants. And, and we also, I mean, we also have to say times have changed. You can't, at least in Germany, uh, kids not treat anymore as we were treated. We yeah. And that's, I mean, my mother apologized two years ago for yeah for letting me there and letting me go back each weekend to berlin um and and i said mom you didn't know how because i never told you in school 
time that what, what happened there. And uh, I wanted that. I wanted that madly always. And what the op uh, the um, the other options were Paluka Schule or Leipzig and no way. So it is I it's my full responsibility that I went through this the whole time. But it she apologized after I told her what happened there. And this was two years ago. So, um, and I also remember the first time after 20 years leaving the school, I had, when I, when I passed the school to, to visit a friend um, there because he's teacher there, I had to uh, change the side of the street. I couldn't walk on the same side as the school. No. So it it's really it's now it's much better because they have a new campus and mm -hmm. um but so girl I I'm okay with it now. I just hope that things are different and that Gregor is doing things differently, not like he was treated, you know. He went through He's not director of the school anymore. So but huh? yeah. oh yeah. Yeah. That's a bit. Um, hmm. Hmm. So the 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 guy, uh, what's his name, Roshinsky? He was. Oh, he, yeah. Yeah, I danced with him at the opera, state opera. Yeah, he was his. Uh, I think he's now director, if I'm right. Hmm. Mm hmm. 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 Wow! So much to say. I don't feel comfortable saying that on air yet. <laughs> um, because I don't want this to turn into something negative or like bringing people down. But I do want to lift the curtain a little bit that we do have different choices and we, we are able to do things differently. It's a matter of, you know, taking our power back and, and peeling back the layers so mm -hmm. that we in our own life, regardless if we're in the theater or not, um, can actually help and make a difference. Yeah. You know, because I, I feel that dance theater in, in general is, is something that is, could easily be put aside. You know, there, there are people that need to do that, but it costs money to do so. Yeah. And, and we need to understand that, um, yes, that it's a privilege and, and the, the entitlement that sometimes comes around it with just an organization is mind boggling to me. Like when, when I stopped dancing, it's like, okay, we can come up with a business model on how to really run a company, even if it's a body company as a business, you have to work. Yeah. But it's possible. Now it didn't work out. It was eye opening and a huge failure. But I'm finally okay with that because nobody else was trying it. Nobody else was really doing it. We were the only ones. But the, the system and the, the, the whole model itself is more applicable now than it was 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Way Absolutely. more tools, right? And I think yeah. where you're already stepping into that space and, and talking to your dancers every week, like not not serving your ego you're not there to fulfill your dreams you're the leader you are looking at your dancers you're there for them it's not that they're working for you you're working for them and that's true leadership for me so where do you take it totally from yeah thank you no i totally agree because it's also funny before i answer that question um because I mean, in Germany, you know, you have a union for everything, and uh, also right. the director, also the director, has something like that. So we meet each other twice a year, and yes, not all directors are there, but so we know each other quite well. And um, it is always fascinating to hear who, which director is struggling with that so many dancers of his company or her company leaving the company, and that each year um, and some others don't have that problem at all. So um, 
And then, of course, the, peop- the, the dancers are coming. They try to get a job in another company. So they come for audition. And um, sometimes I ask them, why are you leaving? So, and then, I always ask that question, yeah. <laughs> Of, I mean, of course, I mean, I also, I'm not, I'm not surprised because the people who are struggling with the, the loss of so many dancers each season, um, let's say, are quite unique. So it is not a surprise that they are always, and um, just for myself, I can say people who are, which are leaving our company, that's not very much and it's not happened very often. Um, they, they quit dancing or they say, which I totally can understand, we are not such a big house with a huge repertoire. Usually they dance my choreography and we do it uh, 10 to 12 times and then it's over. And so we don't have a repertoire. Um, and then the next production starts and they have to do operetta musical, which is not very much like in other companies, but they still have to do it. Um, so of course they are, especially the young ones who want who want something else, something new, something fresh, which I totally understand. And then, then I just say, if you want to leave, leave. It's totally fine. With I mean, it breaks my heart sometimes, uh, but um, I let him go. It doesn't. It doesn't make sense, you know, uh, to say no. But you're in your contract, you know, you have to stay one more year because not yeah. motivated. So. Uh, would be harder for him or her and me on the, at the same time. Right. Um, unfortunately, I forgot your question. No, oh, don't worry, here. <laughs> <laughs> this is Cardi. Um, <laughs> um, so what, what, motive, what do you use for inspiration? Because you, you are filling your dancers' cups, right? And you have to make sure yes. that your cup is always overflowing. So how do you yeah. ensure that you do it is that? actually it is actually quite egoistic you know uh i need a safe place where i feel comfortable and uh good and relaxed to create and work every day and of course it only can be relaxed and comfortable and safe if everyone feels that way right. so and uh Yes, I'm the director, so there is a hierarchy, but uh, I'm also a human being. So I have some needs <laughs> which are not different to anyone else. Um, and um, I have to feel I have to feel good and it only can happen if I feel the same energy from the other side. Uh, because as a choreographer, I need the dancers. The dancers don't need me as a choreographer, a choreographer, obviously, because last night the premiere was from another choreographer. Um, but they're still dancing. So uh, I need them. So I have to treat them very well. Um, and um, it's also my pleasure. So I really like being nice to other people. Um, I keep the dark side for when I'm not in the theater. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all have our dark side and, you know, yes. it come out and that's okay. That makes us who we are. But do you read any books? Do you have, um, do you have like a routine in the morning, how you set up your mind or your, your, just your mindset? <clears throat> um, in the, in the, in the beginning, uh, no, uh, now I'm a yoga teacher as well. Uh, with this certification, actually, okay. and in two weeks I have my uh, my exam for the for the second year, which means then I'm a 500 hour uh, certificated yoga teacher, um, and this this really helped me a lot uh, to let things go. So, and uh, through yoga, of course, I have, I have, my morning is a bit more uh, uh, scheduled. And um, I feel uh, calmer, I guess. I feel more 
in myself than I ever did before. So, and of course, this has also, an, uh, hopefully, an impact to the company. Well, I'm certain that it does, because whatever we put out, we get back. You know, whatever yes. energy we're putting out and, and giving to the world is what we're getting back. Uh, getting back. I, I'm a full believer in that. But I mean, also, it. I mean, as everything in 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 life it is a, it's a you're constantly learning. So it's always try and error. No, uh, the first I do remember the first time someone came to me into my office to say, "Steffen, I got a contract somewhere else. Um, I would like to leave you." Uh, it almost killed me. Uh, I couldn't talk for two days because I. I really thought in this moment, you stupid me. Uh, no. It's something against me. Mm. But of course it was not. And she was explaining immediately, it doesn't have anything to do with you, blah, 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 blah. But um, of course I didn't, the, the, the moment she said, I I'm, I'm leaving, the, I want to leave the company, uh, I, I blocked. I didn't hear any of her explanation. And all her explanations totally make sense. It was a a good, it's a good company. She's still dancing there. It's a good company, well-known company, um, which is a very interesting repertoire. And she is touring the world and all that. So, and we are still in Koblenz. So, I totally understand. And of course, it was the right moment to leave the company for her. Um, and after these two days, I thought I'm so stupid, and I never let it happen again. It doesn't matter how much I love that dancer. It's we are just working together, and yes, we we might like each other. I don't know if they really like me because they, I don't know. Um, but we are just working together. That's what it is, and it feels good when we do it. But when it's over, it's over. Yeah, and it has nothing to do with who we are and what we're about, right? It's just simply like we all have a certain time together, and sometimes yeah. the time ends earlier than we we want to and sometimes it doesn't yeah honey thank you so much for doing this i just i have i could go on and on and on um, My plan. Having but this, this could... what's that sorry i cut you off go on Your, the sun is burning you now oh it's beautiful i'm so grateful for it because we don't get sun very often here in victoria mm -hmm. between um Oh, let's say October and April. Okay. It's like Seattle, you know, the winters are rainy. Yeah. Just before we um, part our ways, can you just let um, us know where we can find you? What is next on your schedule and how, how can I support what you're doing? So, um, I mean, we're here in Koblenz the whole season through. <laughs> till summer and uh the next project is the musical as i said it, it's it premieres on the 7th of december but the next big ballet production will be macbeth uh, which is a uh, world premiere because we get also a very new composition from a very young brazilian composer and it's really exciting um and i say that because usually i'm not such a fan of contemporary music but this one is really good um, and um, this will premiere in April is that true no in March end of March uh, and shortly after we do a beautiful Beethoven ballet called Für Elise after this famous yeah. really composition good. of him and um, if you're around we are Koblenz is close to Frankfurt and Cologne so it is just an hour to drive and then yeah. you see great ballet or opera or drama. Excellent. And where can we find you on the web? I have a website called uh, fuchs-choreography.de. Wonderful. And that's where everything... Where you get from. all information about myself as a choreographer. Great. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Um, I hope to stay connected. Like, this is not just... That would be great. Um, just one quick conversation. 
Okay, thank you so much, my darling. Uh, lots of love. Over Have a great time. day. Okay. Bye. It was so great to see you. It was lovely to see you too. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye. Okay. Bye. Pleasure is mine. Bye. <laughs> Where do nice. ah? There. Okay, now I got it. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening. If this message resonates with you, please pass it on to someone who needs to hear this right now. And if you like what you've heard, your feedback will go a very long way. If you just take 30 seconds and leave me a five-star review, that would mean the world to me. Till next time, point at yourself to rise to all that you are capable of.